In our headlines on this Wednesday afternoon, March 27th, here in South Korea. Korean voters residing overseas are heading to polling stations starting this Wednesday to cast their ballots for the country's 22nd general election. And the rift between the government and the medical sector over admissions quarter remains large as the former reaffirms its resolve for expansion. Also on the local front, fewer babies are born in January this year, marking a drop of almost 8% on year to stand at 21,442. We start our afternoon newscast today with live coverage of the latest emergency economic meeting presided over by President Yoon suk yeol at the Yongsan presidential office this Wednesday afternoon. This particular session comes after news of a drop in Korea's consumer sentiment index in March amid concerns over costly agricultural products. In fact, the consumer sentiment index fell to 100.7 this month from 101.9 last month marking the deepest monthly decline since October. We cut live now to that emo emergency economic session. At ease. Please take your seats. We would like to begin the 23rd emergency economic meeting. First of all, the president will deliver his opening remarks. Hello, everyone. After the inauguration of our government on July 8, 2022, we have held the first emergency economic meeting, and this is the 23rd meeting today. This economic meeting, emergency economic meeting, is where the ministers of each ministries, as well as the experts, come together to discuss about the economy and the issues that are facing the economy and come up with resolutions. And from the uh, from January this year, I have been holding the policy discussion with the people. And with those outcomes, we are putting down the silos of different ministries, and we are coming together to come up with resolutions for the policies that are helpful for the people. As so, we are doing our best to uh, let the people understand and know that we, uh, the policies are directly affecting them. At today's meeting, we are going to talk about how to uh, ease the burden on the people's livelihood and how to uh, support the financial aids for, for the people's livelihood to recover. The economy, the recent uh, economy of Korea is showing signs of recovery. The exports are increasing due to the recent recovery in semiconductor industry, and the exports uh, had increased 11 percent per day, and we are hitting the uh, employment rate, an all-time high for 25 consecutive months, and also uh, investments by corporations are increasing. On, first, uh, on January 15th, during my third policy discussion with the people, 
Samsung and uh, LG, they have said uh, that they have announced a, a plan of 622 trillion won by 2047. And Hyundai Motors today uh, had announced that they will um, invest 68 trillion won for the next three years, uh, thereby increasing 20,000 uh, jobs. And uh, also, uh, LG had announced that they are going to beef up their investment in Coupang. For the next three years, they will invest more than 3 trillion won so that their delivery, their free delivery service will be expanded to the rural areas of the country. Moreover, the first quarter direct investment by foreigners on uh, March 25, it had uh, got it exceeded 60 trillion won, which is an all-time high. And as such, we hope that the warmth of this re economic recovery will spread quickly to uh, people's livelihoods, and we're going to do our best to bur ease the burden on people and increase their income. To this end, we will overall charges and we are going to strengthen the management system of it. On January 16th, at our fourth cabinet meeting, I instructed each ministry to take a zero-based review of all charges. Such charges are levied by the people and corporations for, uh, for taxes. That's why it's dubbed as shadow tax. So it does have uh, charges that have positive effects Effects, effects like uh, the environment charges, but there are also charges that even uh, that are hidden that people are not well aware of. In 2022, an act to this end was uh, enacted, so the nation was nation has been taking care of it. However, this is a burden to the people. Actually, the number of charges went up, came down to 91 from 102 in 2002. However, the scale of it has gone up from 7.4 trillion to 24.6 trillion won, which is threefold. So we are going to reorganize such charges on a large scale. For the last 20 years, only 11 types of charges were reduced, and no previous government had ever pursued such groundbreaking uh, level of changes. But we're going to abolish 18 charges. And for example, the charges on school uh, land will be abolished, and also movie theater ticket charge will be abolished. And also, we are going to reduce the amount of charges on 14 others that are difficult, difficult to completely abolish immediately. The electricity base bases charges, which uh, is 3.7% levy, will go down to under 1 percentage level. And also, the departure charges for overseas travel will be lower from 11,000 won to 7,000 won, and the exempted will be expanded from under two years of age to under 12. So so the government will take close look at such charges, and we're going to make effective of these, the usage of the, these charge money. And also, by using a general accounting system, we are going to make the best use out of these charges. And we are going to take close look at 
the abolishment of movie theater ticket charges and the uh, school charges so that they could be directly uh, felt by the people. And we are going to temporarily suspend the application of a total of 263 regulations. Such temporary suspension will be in regard to the essential areas that are directly linked to people's livelihoods. The regulations that were advised by the local governments that it has to be deregulated, these items will be temporarily suspended. Because of policy uh, restrictions, uh, we are not able to abolish them at the moment. However, uh, in the long run, if it is possible to abolish, then that's what, what we're going to do. First of all, the for the uh, location and the growth uh, related regulation will be uh, also abolished. Uh, because the the floor area ratio regulation uh, has been eased. However, there are other regulations for the relocation and the location of the business sites. So uh, such regulations will be eased as soon as possible. We're also going to expand the use of Onnuri gift certifi uh, certificates to neighborhood shopping districts. And also for foreign workers, it, when uh, there is an illegal departure of them, if it is proven that the employer thoroughly managed them, they would be waived from future personnel allocation disadvantages. And in terms of daily uh, regulations uh, that impact the daily lives, we're going to uh, make them proper as soon as possible. For instance, uh, the inspection of uh, cars. Uh, the inspection period will be ex uh, extended to five years from four years, and we are also going to uh, make more ex inspection sites in Seoul. And for the young adults and newlyweds, uh, their homes that we're providing, the happy houses, uh, the maximum residency period will be extended to six years, to 10 years from six. And also, the critical, uh, this critically disabled, uh, if there is a family member who is critically disabled, there's also going to be a, a subsidy for them that will be uh, promptly supported to the families. With the high prices and high interest rates, the SMEs and the micro um, enterprise owners, we are going to resolve the difficulties and uh, by providing a total of 42 trillion won in funds. <coughs> And the, uh, with the private bank sectors and also the uh, policy uh, institutions, we are going to, we hope that they will support the programs in a timely manner. With the government and the banking sector, we are preparing uh, a total of 2.3 trillion won. Uh, and in January, the, the bank sector had already refunded 1.3 trillion won of interest to these SME owners, and the second round would uh, start from the 29th of this month, uh, giving back 300 billion in total. And also, the uh, from last year, we have uh, we have started the repayment of the loans. And about about $290 billion of the funds will be used to support the SMEs. 
And also, 170 billion will be used to support the young people. So, I hope that the banks will take a thorough management so that these uh, funds will be used properly. And also, the government will thoroughly manage real estate PF-related risks, and we're going to provide sufficient funds to uh, normal businesses. To do to this end, with LH and the LH Security uh, Corporation, we are going to expand uh, five trillion one to thirty trillion one of fund. And also, if there are if the the normal companies that are suffering from a temporary um, difficulty in finance, they are also going to be supported. And also also, I understand that there the lender, I hope that the banks would play a, a, a pivotal role as a loaner, as a primary loaner. And what is most important is that we have to uh, make sure that such measures will take effective, uh, will be effectively effective quickly. And I hope that the ministries will listen to the local sites and the fields and private experts so that the action plans will be prepared quickly. I look forward to a Productive uh, discussion. 보고 시간을 갖겠습니다. 먼저 경제부총리께서 부담금 정비 및 관리 체계 강화 방안을 발표해 주시고 이어서. Korean voters residing overseas are heading to their embassies or consular centers starting this Wednesday to partake in the 22nd general election. Our political correspondent Shin Hyung reports. The general election in South Korea is scheduled for April 10th, just two weeks from now. Overseas voting for Koreans living abroad began on Wednesday. However, overseas voting is only available for those who register in advance. Korean citizens without a permanent address in Korea can vote for proportional representatives in the assembly. Those with a permanent address may vote for both proportional and regional lawmakers. According to the National Election Commission, for the upcoming general election, nearly 148,000 overseas voters have registered, accounting for about 7.5% of the total overseas voters. This marks a roughly 35 percent decrease from the last presidential election in 2022 and a 14 percent drop from the previous general election in 2020. In the last general election, the turnout was the lowest ever at 23.8 percent, mainly due to the impact of COVID-19. By country, the highest numbers of overseas Korean voters are in the U.S. with over 33,600, followed by Japan and China. One overseas voter based in Sweden is hoping for a united National Assembly. I hope the new parliament understands the issues facing society and remains united to solve problems. Seeing happy families in Sweden, I also hope South Korea works towards creating a fair environment where parents can equally share responsibility for their children. Meanwhile, the ruling People Power Party's interim leader Han Dong-un is slated to address overseas voters on behalf of the party's satellite party, the People Future Party. Han's focus will be on boosting the rights and interests of overseas Koreans. He is expected to address measures for bridging gaps and reforming welfare while also appealing for support at the election. The main opposition Democratic Party initiated its campaign last week aimed at encouraging Koreans living overseas to vote. The party pledged to strengthen support for fostering the identity of overseas Koreans by increasing aid to Korean schools and expanding scholarships. It also stressed its commitment to providing them with the same level of administrative service as those available domestically. A total of 220 polling stations in 115 countries will be open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for voters until April 1st. Shin Ayong, Arirang News. 
Having reaffirmed its intentions to push ahead with medical school quota expansion, the government has now also shared plans for a special health care budget allocation. Our Che Siong has the latest. Amidst the ongoing conflict regarding the South Korean government increasing the medical school enrollment quota, the health ministry says it will announce a special budget plan by the end of May. To ensure concentrated and stable funding, we plan to operate a special account for essential medical services. The next two months will be the most important time for budget planning, with a budget request submitted to the Ministry of Strategy and Finance by the end of May. On Tuesday, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol visited a general hospital in Cheongju, Chungcheongbuk-do province, and proposed that the medical field discuss the health care budget for next year. President Yoon said having to increase the number of medical school places is inevitable and the medical community should come out to engage in talks. Prime Minister Han dok su also met with medical school leaders to propose dialogue between medical sector stakeholders. As the government, we will actively engage in dialogue with the medical and education sectors, trying to solve problems together. Also, to facilitate talks, the government has postponed the license suspensions of doctors who have walked out in protest. However, the government is maintaining its original quota expansion of 2000 from 2025 and has finalized its allocation plan for each med school. On Tuesday, pediatrician Lee myon was elected as the new leader of the Korean Medical Association with 65 percent of the votes. He has voiced opposition to the government's plan and could push for even larger-scale collective action. It's been six weeks since trainee doctors left their hospitals in protest. To show their solidarity with them, the exodus of medical school professors nationwide has continued. Professors at most of the country's 14 medical schools have submitted their resignation letters, including almost 430 at Ulsan University and around 400 at Seoul National University. To minimize disruption to patient care, the government says it will deploy an additional 1,900 physician assistant nurses and 200 more public health doctors. Che Su-hyung, Arirang News. And in other news, the number of newborns sank substantially lower in January this year, aggravating concerns over Korea's population decline. Our Lee Su-jin has the latest numbers. The number of births in South Korea dropped again in the first month of the year. Data from Statistics Korea on Wednesday shows that the number of births came to 21,442 in January, down 7.7 percent compared to the same month last year. That's the lowest on record for any month of January. The number of deaths came to 32,490, falling 0.5 percent compared to the previous year. But the official said the drop is mostly due to the COVID-19 pandemic-related deaths that were reported in January 2023, and that the agency expects to see an increase in the number of deaths in the future due to South Korea's aging population. With the number of deaths once again exceeding the number of births, the decline in natural population, calculated by subtracting the number of deaths from the number of births, came to some 11,000. South Korea has now seen a drop in its natural population for 51 consecutive months, and the agency expects to continue to see a decline in the coming months. The number of registered marriages, however, rose 11.6 percent to some 20,000, and the number of divorces was also up 9.5 percent to nearly 8,000. The agency said that the on-year rises were mostly because there were more working days where people could register their marriages and divorces in January this year compared to last year when Seolnar or the Lunar New Year was in the first month of the year. He added that further observation is needed to see whether there will be an uptick in the number of marriages this year. Lee Su-jin, Arirang News.
Good afternoon. Those in southern provinces had a rough morning to start the day with dense fog. Conditions have improved and highs are rising fast, going two to nine degrees Celsius, higher than Tuesday afternoon. We had a chilly morning temperatures, so there will be a wide temperature swings between lows and highs. Some parts could have a 15 degrees difference within a few hours, so do dress accordingly so as not to come down with a cold. But overall, we can't complain much about the weather today. Expect fine early spring weather this afternoon under mostly sunny skies with decent air quality nationwide. Seoul and Busan will hike to 16 degrees, Gwangju topping out at 19 degrees Celsius this afternoon. Then there is another round of rain in the forecast tomorrow, starting in the west and Jeju spreading nationwide by the afternoon. Then more calm and promising weather in store from Friday with spring flower blooming season right around the corner. That's Korea for you and here's a look at the international weather conditions. Right, and that ends our Wednesday afternoon newscast. Thank you for watching. Do stay with us for our panel session coming up next.